Welcome to another tip video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's lesson, I'm going to teach you the difference between the locked and enabled properties in your Microsoft Access Forms. In today's lesson, I'm going to show you the difference between the locked and the enabled properties in Microsoft Access. Here I've got a simple database with a customer table and a real basic customer form. And if you don't know how to build these, make sure you check out my free Microsoft Access Beginner Level 1 class, which you can find on my website or on my YouTube channel. Now, if there's information in this form that you don't want your end users to be able to modify, you can either lock the field or you can set enabled to false. And let me show you the difference. Let's go into Design View, right click, Design View. Let's say the first name I'm going to open up the properties by double clicking on it. That brings up the property sheet. And if you click on the data tab, you'll see enabled and locked. Enabled is yes by default and locked is no. Let's let's play with locked first. Let's set locked to yes. All right, I'm going to close the property sheet and I'm going to close and reopen the customer form. Save changes, yes. I like to close it and reopen it just so we can see what it looks like in case there's any changes in the design. All right, now, I can still click on this. I can still highlight stuff and copy if I need to, but if I try to type anything else into this field, I'm typing on the keyboard right now, nothing happens. I can't delete stuff. I can't do anything. This field looks like it's still able to be edited or changed, but you can't. You can't do anything. It's locked. It's in its locked state. Whatever it's in right now, that's where it's going to be. Let's contrast that with the other one. Let's open up last name's properties, and let's set enabled to no. All right, now notice right away in Design View, you can see that that switches, and it looks like it's kind of grayed out. All right, again, let's save changes and reopen it. And now look, last name is grayed out. I can't even click on that field. I can't select that text. I can't do anything with it. And if I go through the records, you can see it's all the same. I can still make changes down here in these other fields. I can't change Joe, even though I can click on it. And last name is just you can't get in there at all. So that's the difference between disabled and locked. Locked means you can still select the text, you can still click in the field, but enabled versus disabled means you can't do anything to it. Here's an example of where you can use the enabled property, for example, to make your database a little more user friendly. Here I've got a test taker form, and I build this in my Microsoft Access Developer Level 9 class, where you pick a student, you pick a department, like let's say science, and as soon as you pick that, it enables the class combo box. See how it was disabled before? Like test right now. I can't pick a test because I haven't picked the class yet. And then once I pick the class, like Astronomy 101, now the test combo box becomes enabled. And if I go back up top here, and let's say I delete the science department, all right, it disables and deletes the data from these two. See, these are now disabled. I cannot pick one of these options until I pick a department, right? So I can go department. I can go science, now I can pick astronomy, and I automatically drop the boxes down. And then, for example, the planets quiz. And now I can begin the test. And that's an example of where you can use the enabled and disabled property. Right? If I, if I delete the class, now the test goes away, and it disables this field, because you can't have a test without a class. So that's one use of the uh, enabled property. And to do it like this, where it, it happens on the fly, you have to have a little tiny bit of programming, not much, a little tiny bit of VBA programming, or you can do it with a macro, and I show you how to do that in my Developer Level 9 class. I will put links to all of this in the description below the video, and of course, if you need help with any of this stuff, please feel free to drop me a comment. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this free tip video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. Please give me a thumbs up and drop a comment. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and, of course, visit my channel page. And if you need to learn Access from the beginning, you can watch Level 1 for free. It's three hours of training right here on either my website or on YouTube, and you can get Level 2 for just a dollar. And check the description below the video if you want any more information on the locked and enabled properties. I have lots of lessons available on my website. Thanks, take care, and we'll see you next time.